Hello. How is everyone doing? I am Adrian Cox Settles, and I am here to talk about multiplication. Multiplication. You gotta love multiplication. <laughs> now, I want to show you different, a variety of different strategies, um, different resources, and fun facts about multiplication. Oh, I love multiplication. So what exactly is multiplication? Now, what do you know so far? What do you think? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Mm, not quite. Mm, give me more. Mm, sounds pretty good. Okay, so multiplication is the math operation where you do addition of the number to itself, okay? So you start out with a number and then you add in it to itself a certain amount of times, depending on what you, how many times you're multiplying it. So you're repeating, multiplying that number, okay? So it's a math operation that indicates how many times a number is added to itself, okay? So it's a, tri a twin, a triplet, a quadruple, a quadruple, <laughs> a, quadru a, a, a quadrilateral. <laughs> Got you with a math term. Now, so you keep adding the number to itself, you know, like you building it on top of each other over and over and over again, okay? So that will, that is basically what multiplication is. Now, someone might be thinking, hmm, it's not that simple. Well, let me show you how simple it is. Just wait back and see. Now, if you want to take notes, I'll give you a minute. Go ahead, stop the video, get a notebook and a pencil so you can get started because I'm going to go through steps and strategies and things like that. And of course, you can rewind pause and rewind back and forth, however you want to do it. Okay, so let's get started. Now, I want to start with the first strategy, okay? So let me see. Let me go to the whiteboard. Give me a second. <laughs> All righty, let's pull up the whiteboard. Now, this is my wonderful whiteboard. It's nice and clear, but it's not going to be for long because I'm about to put some math on it. About to put some math, math on it. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is, let me see. Let me text this so it's going to be somewhat neat because once I get started, I get started. Woohoo! Okay, so we're going to start out with repeated addition, okay? Repeated addition. Now, what do you think that means? Repeated addition. Repeated means to do it over and over and over again. Addition means to, you know, to put it together. You know, we add in one and one to get two. We add in two and two to get four. We add in three to three to get six. Okay, so we doing something over and over again. That's repeated addition. Multiplication is repeated addition. So. If you are good at adding, that's the foundation you need to be quick at multiplication. However, if you're not so good at adding, it's going to take you longer because you're going to use your fingers and you use your toes to get multiplication. It's going to take you longer because you haven't mastered your addition because multiplication is repeated addition. Okay, so think about that. Now, let's go to some numbers, let's see. Let's start out with the twos, okay? So if someone says, what is two times one, okay? So two times one means that you wanna write two one time. So two times one is two, okay? And then the next one is, what's two times two? Okay, now this is where the addition comes in, when you start with two and you go above, okay? So two times two is the same as two plus two, which is four, okay? This is how many times you write the number, okay? You're writing two 
two times, but you add in it because multiplication is what? What? Repeated. What? Repeated addition. Yes. Okay. So the next one is what? Two times three. You're writing two how many times? Three times. Two plus two plus two. So two plus two is what? Four plus two is what? Six. Okay. So two times three is six because you write in two three times and you add in it. Okay. So two times four means you're writing two how many times? How many? Okay. You're writing two four times. One, two, three, four. Okay. Two plus two is four, plus two more is six, plus two more is eight. So two times four is what? Huh? Huh? Right. Two times two times four is eight. Now, what is two times five or two five times, okay? Two times five means two five times. Switch the five and the two, okay? Two times five means five two times. I mean, two times five means how many five, how many twos? Five times, okay? So how many twos are we gonna write? One, two, three, four, five twos. Two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight, plus two is 10, okay? So two times five is 10 because we wrote two five times by doing addition because multiplication is what? What? Repeat it. What? Subtraction? Huh? Division? No, repeated addition. Okay, so we added. <laughs> and some of y'all like to do these. Y'all like to use those fingers and you like to use those toes. But eventually, this is good to start. But eventually, we want to transfer from here to here. That's the goal. So start off here. Do that. Master that. You know, say it out loud so you can go from here and put it here. We want it here, okay? So you eventually you'll transfer from your fingers into your brain. If you do it, do the practice, say it out loud, and you just keep practicing, okay? There's different strategies that we'll go through. So I'm gonna keep going, okay? So this is repeated addition. You can do this with any type of multiplication fact. You know, if you do six times four, that's six how many times? four times. So that's six plus six plus six plus six. And it's going to equal what? What's six times four? Right, 24. Okay. So you can do repeated addition with any particular uh, multiple or you can say factor, fact, not factor, but fact to get your answer. Now that you see this, repeated addition sometimes get kind of tiring because you might have like two times 10. If you don't know that, you have to write two 10 times and keep adding up. So this is a good start. And this is what addition, this is what multiplication is if you break it down. So I want you to see the fundamental, the foundation of what multiplication really is. So multiplication is repeated addition. However, you're going to memorize these and have it in your head. Two times five is 10. Two times 10 is 20. Two times 40 is 80. You know, we want to get you to the point where you memorize it. But this is what you see as you break it through. This is what multiplication is, is repeated addition. Okay, so this is just one strategy. Let me show you some more strategies. So let me clear this out. Okay, the next strategy I want to talk about is um, skip counting. Okay. And a lot, a lot of people, many people are really good with skip counting, you know, and they use their fingers. They're really good with using their fingers. And like I said, using your fingers, you know, that's a good tool to get started, you know, but once you start really practicing and start mastering, you go from your fingers to your brain, you say it out. Okay. Now skip counting, skip counting. What is skip counting? Okay, so skip counting, you skip, you like, you walk over something, you jump over something, okay? So we're gonna be jumping over numbers, okay? So we're not gonna go consecutive, consecutively, number by number, one, two, three, four, five. No, we're gonna be jumping over numbers, okay? And then we're gonna do the twos again. So let's start with two. 
two, okay, we're going to do two times one. Let's start with the basic. Now, two times one, remember there's only one two. So since there's only one two, we're not going to be skipping anything. You have to have at least two numbers in order to skip, you know, skip a number. So we start with the two. And now what is two times two? Two times two is what? Four. So when you do skip counting, you go like this. Two, four, then you skip again. Six, you skip again. Eight, you skip again. You skip the number inside. So two to four, you skip three. Four to six, you skip five. Six to eight, you skip seven. Then eight, you, eight, you skip nine to get 10. And then after 10, you get what? 12, 14, 16. And then you can say 18 and 20. So skip counting is when you're going just like that. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 20, 22, 24. You know, you skip counting, okay? You're skipping, um, basically you're skipping the odd number, if you know what odd is, is the um, number in between the even number, if you know what even is. But if you don't, we're not gonna discuss that right now, but you're going two to four to six to eight to 10 to 12 to 14, 16, 18, 20, and on, 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 positive infinity, okay? So that's skip counting. Okay, so we skip counting by twos. If you skip count by threes, you go what? Three. Then what's three plus three? Six. Then what's um, six plus three? Nine. You know, some people do it on their fingers, okay? So two times one is two, okay? Two times two is four, you know? So you go use your fingers to see how many times you do each, each digit. I'm doing two one time. I'm doing two two times. I'm doing two three times. I'm doing two four times. And I'm doing two five times. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And someone say, what's two times five? You put your five fingers up and you say two, four, six, eight, ten. So if I have two and I'm multiplying or adding it five times, I'll get ten. Okay, so that's how people multiply on their fingers. They say two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, two times four is eight, two times five is 10. You know, so they like two times five, let me put up five fingers, two. Then the next, next, when I add two, four, when I add two, six, when I add two, eight, when I add two, 10. And so this, what, this, this is how they use their fingers. Now, if I put 10 fingers up and they say, well, two times 10, let me start by putting 10 fingers up. And then I'm gonna count by two by skip counting. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Two times 10 is 20. Okay, so that's one way you can use your hands. And like I said, using your hands is really good. You know, it's like a kinesthetic way because you don't move it to thinking. But eventually you want to um, stop using your fingers and count, you want to have it up here. But this is a good tool to get you started. Okay, so threes, we say three, six, nine, plus three more, 12, plus three more, what? 15, plus three more, what? Okay, 18 plus three more what? 21 plus three more, three more what? 24 plus three more what? 27 plus three more what? 30. Very good. And then you do skip count three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Okay, skip counting, just go bam, 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 bam. Okay. And then fives, you know, we're not going to do the five right now, but the fives are the easy ones. They have the digit of the five and a zero at the end of each number, okay? Five, 10, 15, 20, you know. So that would be the five. For skip counting, you just put the, write the numbers down. Now, these numbers are called multiples in math, okay? If you might know that term, you might not. Multiple, you pretty much have the number, well, <laughs> and you add it to a self, you know, so two can go on to two, two can go on to four, two can go on to six. All of the num numbers on the top row are divisible, but means it can be divided by two. Okay. That's another word. Divisible, divisibility, multiples, you're going up, you know, and the multiples of two go to infinity because you can keep saying two, four, six, you can say one million, two million, and it goes into infinity and it doesn't stop. Okay, so we can stop there. I don't want to make it too, um, I don't want to go too far out there, you know, be focusing on skip counting. <laughs> okay, so let's skip counting. So we went over repeated addition, two, 
two plus two was four, you know, two plus two plus two was six. And then you went to skip counting two, four, six, eight. Okay, so this is the second strategy. All right, so the third strategy I wanted to go over is, let's see. The third strategy I wanted to go over is arrays, okay? Now, if you have done multiplication, then you know um, sometimes the teacher wants you to put things in arrays, right? Now, what is arrays? Okay, so arrays pretty much is a, an arrangement of putting like circles, lines, or any type of symbols in rows and columns, okay? So rows go like this, column goes like this, okay? Rows go like this, column goes like this, okay? So rows go from left to right, right to left, columns go up and down or down and up, okay? So we're going to do rows and columns for um, arrays, okay? So, okay, we're going to have rows, then we'll have columns, okay? I'm going to write it like that, okay? Rows and columns, okay? Rows times columns, row by columns, however you want to use it. Okay, now this is more like a graphic visual type of way of doing it. You know, you actually can see the figures being written out. So we're gonna start with twos again. So two times one, okay? The first number is the row. The second number is the column. The row goes what? Left and right, okay? They up levels like that. So we have two rows and we have one column. And this is one column by itself. So two times one equals, you add it up, that's two, that's two circles. Then you have two times two. So you have two rows of circles and you have two columns of circles. And then you add the circles up, one, two, three, four, you get four, okay? So two times two is four. And then you have two times three, okay? So two times three means you have two rows and three columns. You see how you have two rows going down? One, two. And you see how you have three columns? One, two, three. So you add the circles and you get six. Two times three is six. And let's do two times four. That means you have two rows of twos and you have four columns. Okay, so you got two, two steps. And then you have one, two, three, four. So that's the two by four. And when you add the circles up, you get eight. So two times four is eight. Now, in multiplication, there's something called the commutative, um, you can say commutative law, right? Okay, commutative law basically means that you can switch the numbers. Instead of saying two times one, we can say one times two. They can switch places and still get the same answers, okay? Because multiplication is commutative, okay? So they can switch positions and still get the same answer. So let me show you. So, so instead of saying two times one, let's say one times two. Remember, this is the row and this is the column. So let's draw it out. So you have one row and you have two columns. You see, this is the row, that's one, and this is the column, that's two. And one times two, when you multiply, you get two. And then you can say two times two, this will give you the same, okay? This will give you the same because you have a two by two, okay? It's the same. Okay, let's do this one, which would be a three times two. I mean, yeah, three times two. Oops, let me make this look right. About to start looking a little crazy. He was getting hyped. Okay, three times two, you may have three rows blah, 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 and two columns. You see that? So this is a three by two. So you add the numbers up, you get six. You see how this is six and this is six. I'm sorry, I put two right there. Yeah, you know it's supposed to be four. Thank you. You was trying to correct me, but guess what? I couldn't hear. Okay, so thank you for trying to correct me and I can fix it now. <laughs> so two times two is Four is not two, oh, then I do. So I have four and four, and I have two and two. Thank you for correcting me, and I have two and two. All right, now, so this is two times four is eight, and also four times two is what? I have four rows, four rows of circles, and I have two columns. You see, this is a four, and this is a two. And then when you add it up, you get what? Eight. So two times four is eight. And also eight times, also four times two is eight. 
okay? It's commutative. You can switch them back and forth, okay? Addition is also commutative too, but we, we, we didn't go into that. But commutative would be addition and multiplication would be two operations that are commutative in math. Okay, so this is how you do the arrays. Now, you don't have to have circles. You can have stars. You can have cars. You can have people. You can have chocolate. You can have um, video game um, controllers, you know, but you have to put them in rows and you have to put them in columns, okay? And you'll see that it comes out nice and even when you do a multiplication. And so once you put them in rows and columns, only thing you have to do is just go through and count them. And that's a form of multiplication. This is also repeated at addition in a more graphic way, okay? So this is a raise, and let's do something called equal grouping, okay? That's the fourth strategy I want to discuss. Okay, let me see. Yeah, so if I, you know, I might make a mistake here and there. If you see it, just um, let me know, okay? Hopefully I'll hear you and I'll correct it. I tend to go back over and then I look, right? <laughs> Okay, equal, equal, equal grouping. Okay, let me say the word right, right? Let me say the word correctly. I right, equal grouping. So equal means having the same, okay? If my age is equal to your age, we're the same age. If I have the same amount of money or equal dollars and you have equal dollars, we have the same amount. If I have $10 and you have equal amount, you have $10 too. Equal is the same, okay? Sometimes the math we use when we come to like um, lengths and things like that, we use a word called congruence, okay? Like equal length. If this is five inches, that's five inches too. And then we get in all that fun things about triangle and trigonometry. But oh, that's, let me slow down. I'm sorry. We're talking about multiplication. So equal grouping. We're putting things in equal groups. So let me stay focused. Okay, because sometimes I like to go to calculus and trig, but I'm going to stay in multiplication. So you might learn some more, you know, some interesting words, okay? Like congruent, okay? That was a good one. You learned divisibility and multiples and all those wonderful things. Okay, equal grouping. Let's start with the twos again, okay? Because I love math. So uh, math pretty much, you know, comes in contact. Algebra comes in with geometry, with trigonometry, basic math. Everything is intertwined. So sometimes I might throw a word that might have been in calculus in or trig in or pre-calc or geometry. I might throw it in here because everything is intertwined. And I might actually teach you those words because it's relevant at that time just to take you up to a different level. You know, you can throw things around like the visibility, congruent you know, multiple, you can throw those things around. People are like, wow, wow, you know, just, just a little something, you know, just a little something to have. All right, equal grouping. Let me get back to that multiplication. Let's see, let's go with mm, twos. All right, let me do this. Okay, equal grouping, okay? So we're gonna say two times one, two times one. So we're going to say two and one group or two and one set. Let's say two and one group, okay? So I'm going to draw one group and I'm going to put two inside, two little circles. So if you have two and one group or one group of two, what is that equal to? That's equal to two. So two times one is what? Two times one is what? Two times one is two. Okay. And, you know, I have a Baltimore accent. So my twos kind of go kind of long, long gated, you know, two, you know, do, you know, you know, I still have my Baltimore accent. So, yeah, so I have an accent. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one is two times two. So you have two and two groups or two groups of two. So I'm going to make this represent the group. So I have two groups of what? I have two groups of two. So you just add the circle. One, two, three, four. We add the groups, the circles up, and you get four. Okay. And you get four. So I'll show you. So you add this up with that. You go one. Okay. You add that up with that, and that's what you get. All right. Let me go back. Let me go back because it was doing a little too much. I wasn't even trying to do all that. I was just trying to have one. You know what I mean? And so to do the one, I need to do this one. Do that. Okay. So two plus two 
It's four. Okay. That, I, that's the one I was looking for. Okay. See, I, I know what I know what's going on. All right. So the next thing we're going to say is two times three. Okay. Two times three, we're going to have what? Three groups. Well, how many in it? Two. So we have three groups of two. Okay. Then my group is looking a little crazy. I might have to use a little tool to fix it up. Okay. And then my last one, let me fix it because I want to look a little bit neater than that. He kind of went kind of crazy and kind of berserk on that one. Okay, so let me just make it look similar to that one. It's a little off, but that's okay. And then you go through and you count it. Okay, you go through and you count. Here we go. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So two times three is what? Two times three is what? Huh? Two times three is what? Two times three is six. Yes. Yes, I told you. <laughs> two times three is six. Okay, so two times four, we go through. We made four groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I put the plus sign because I'm going to be adding my circles. Put my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two times four is eight. Okay, so this is equal grouping. We have the same amount of circles or numbers in each group. Okay, so two times one is one group of twos. Okay, two times two is two group of twos. Three, two times three is three group of twos. Two times four is four group of twos. And remember, I said it's commutative, so you can switch the number around. You can put, instead of putting two times one, I could put one times two, right? And I can make one. I can make what? What's this? I can have two groups, right? Of what? Two groups of one. Okay. Two groups of one. Now I'll put an S on here for groups, make it plural since it's two. Okay. So two groups of one is equal to two. Okay. It's commutative. So we switch the number and you change the grouping up, you still get the same answer. Like for this one, let's do three groups of two. So you can see what I'm doing. Three groups of two, that's say three times two. Okay. Or two groups of three. Sorry, let's do two groups of three, sorry. Two groups of three, that's probably what I'm doing. Even though sometimes you can switch back and forth, I'm gonna try to stay consistent from what I said. So two groups, that's group one, that's group two of three circles. Okay, and then you get six. So two times three is six. And also three times two is six. Remember in multiplication, you can flip it. It's the community um law property, sorry, community property. So you can flip it back and forth and you'll still get the same answer because you'll still have the same amount of numbers, but it just be in a different arrangement. Okay, so this is equal grouping. This is another way that you can do multiplication, you know, just group things equally, okay, because repeating something is pretty much grouping it, you know, equally, and skipping something is pretty much grouping something, e you know, equally, it's, it's pretty much the same thing if you really think about it, okay, so I'm gonna clear this out, now, let's do the number line really quick, okay, let's do the number line. This is another strategy I want to show you. I just want to show you, you can say skip counting, re repeated addition. You can say, you got to say skip count or repeated addition. We're going to do skip counting on the number line. Now, um, okay, let me just go through and make it as neat as I can. Let's do zero here. Since everyone pretty much used to having zero in the middle, we'll do here, do zero here. But it really doesn't matter what a zero is because a number line goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So zero can be shifted at any time. You can take a picture and zero can be all the way on the left, on the right. And sometimes zero is not even on the number line, you know. So I'm going to do, do, do it how people tr are traditionally seeing it in elementary school. And so zero is in the middle. And let's do one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I could stop right here if I want to, but I'm gonna go on eleven and twelve. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna use this side for right now. 
I'm gonna put something here, it's called negative infinity. That means, you know, on the left side, it goes all the way to negative numbers, okay? Now, elementary school, you're not talking about negative numbers too much, so I'm not gonna touch that. And over here, you go to positive infinity. Like I said before, we count by twos, we can get to two million, one million, two million, four million, you know, it'll keep going two times, 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 and they keep going on forever, you know? So let's start with two. We're going to say two times one. So two times one, we're just going to start at two, okay? We only have one loop for two times one. Now we want to know, okay, so two times one is two. Now, two times two means we have how many loops? We have two loops. So we go here and you see we skipping, okay? Be skipping. So two times two is what? You look at the number, it's four. The answer will be down the bottom, okay? Now, if you're going to division, you'll look at the top, but we only doing multiplication, so let me focus. So two times three means I need how many loops? How many loops? Right, three loops. So I skip, skip counting. Okay, that's three. So two times three is what? Six. And then two times four is what? Eight. Okay, and then two times five is what? 10. Okay, oops, I'm about to put 10. So basically you can use the number line as, um, as a mathematical representation or as a graphic or mathematical representation to show you how to skip count. Or you can just add, you know, two plus, like here, you can just say two plus two, you can say three, four. You know, if you want to count like that, two plus two, you can say two, then you can say plus two more, three, four, okay, plus two more, five, six, you know, so sometimes you do have to use your fingers if you are still struggling, but eventually you want to take that and put it here, okay? So this is a way of doing this using the number line. And let me write the word number line like I did everything else. Let me stay consistent because consistency is very important in math, okay? It's very important to be organized in math step by step. And when you're in class, ask your teacher questions because that one question can make you go, oh, and you can actually grow from there. Because sometimes people are sitting in math class, they don't have a clue about what's going on. They don't want to ask any questions. And then when they get to the next grade, guess what? They have those same questions because math build on top of each other, just like multiplication. <laughs> like multiplication is repeated addition. You know, math is building on top of math concepts, you know, addition to multiplication, then you get algebra and you, all these other fun things, you know, you get exponents and, you know, things like that. So, you know, this, you, you want to be strong on each, each level before the level that you get into so that you can, can be able to flow like that. Okay. I learned my multiplication tables in second grade and my math, whew, was always fast. I was in competitions. Um, I got awards. I just, I was a really good teacher, tutor, teacher, um, math department head. I taught teachers how to teach. And now I have my own tutoring business. And math is just wonderful. And it started with second grade multiplication. Okay, so I'm trying to get you to incorporate this into yourself, whether you want to go into math or not, just be strong with math because you're going to need math for science, you know, you're going to need math for everyday life, you know, math help you with your critical thinking skills, your problem solving skills. So, you know, when you're trying to find something that's unknown, they call it algebra. That's also, um, it's mathematical, you know, algebra is math. and you're trying to figure things out more than likely that's math and a lot of times you can get it with a math formula well thinking critical to try to figure out what's the missing component that's math math helps out with everyday life so if you're struggling you're gonna struggle with cooking you're gonna struggle with this and struggle with that so let's just get over that we're gonna we're not going to struggle we're going to take this in become multiplication experts yes and we're going to have a breeze and have fun with math. Okay, so let me move on. <laughs> All right, so now the next thing I would like to talk about 
Now, as you do these strategies, you know, with math, I want you to write it down, you know, so if you skip counting, or you skip counting, you pretty much know, if you don't know, you can just write it down like here. You can say, write it up, read it and write it. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. Two times five is 10. Okay. You can just keep, you can know, know, learn what the fact is so you can memorize the right thing and say it and write it and say it, write it and say it, write it and say it. Every time you're studying, whether you're doing a raise, repeated addition, you know, um, whether you're doing um, a raise, repeated addition, whether you're doing skip counting, say it out loud, two, four, six, eight, you know, two times four is eight, you know, say it out. Okay. So remember, you want to write it and say it, write it and say it. Okay. That's a really good strategy. Now, let's say... If you're like, oh, no, I don't want to write. So what can you do? What can you do if you don't want to write? Hmm? So I'm going to just say, write it and say it, you know, because that helps you to get it in your head. Write it and say it, okay? Now, let's say you don't want to write it and say it. You can type it and say, it. <laughs> let me say, it. and say it. Okay, you can type it and say it, you know, like I was doing, I was texting. Let me put it right here. You can say two times one equals two. Okay, two times two equals four. Two times, um, oops, 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 okay. Two times um, three equal six, okay? You could just keep doing it over and over and over, okay? Because some people love the text instead of writing. But when you do it, two times one equals two, say it. Two times two equals four. Two times three equals six. It's always keep you memorizing, you saying it over and over and over again. And, you know, it's help you practicing by saying it and writing it and things like that. It's, you know, you're doing the movement, you know? So this is real good for kinesthetic, but it can be good for everyone else too. Now, another thing, if you don't want to write it and you don't want to type it, where is that? Okay. Now, this right here, you don't need one of these, but this is a graphic calculator. Okay. You can use a basic calculator and go like this. Okay. Two times one equals two. Two times two equals four. Two times three equals six. Two times four equals eight. Two times five equals 10. So you can do the practice in the calculator too, okay? If you want something smaller, you don't want to do the computer, you can do a little calculator, okay? Now, it don't have to be a calculator like this, okay? Because this is a TI-84. And, you know, um, I normally have this when I'm like helping someone with calculus or something. But this is multiplication. So you can use a basic calculator. If you want to use scientific and be advanced, use scientific, okay? Um, just use your calculator. You can use the calculator on your phone just to type it in. Two times one equals two. Two times three equals, you know, just to see it, you know. And then you can, of course, write it on the paper, you know, whatever, as long as you put it in some kind of way. You're writing it, you're typing it, you put in a calculator, you know, do one of those form of actions. That's another way of practicing, okay? Now, what else did I want to talk about? <laughs> now, I wanted to talk about learning styles. Now, we all learn different, okay? We all have different ways of learning. Now, you have um, something called the VOLT test. It's an assessment you can get. Now, I have this assessment on my website, okay? So you have the VOLT test, the V-A-R-K, okay? So the V is like for visual. The A is for audio, audio toy, audio toy, okay? The R is for rewrite. And then the K is for kinesthetic. Okay, so the visual learner are the ones that learn more about date, by charts and graphics and things like that. Have a pretty chart up, multiplication chart, multiplication table. We have that up. They really like to see that. They can see all the patterns. Two times two is four. They can see the whole thing. Okay, so they're visual. They see the tables, the charts, the graphs. Um, the audio, 
they like to listen, you know, listen and hear, you know. So um, visually, you'll see, you know, maybe your parent would like to get you a poster, have it on the wall where you can look at it, you, you know, look at it and see it and make it appealing, you know, like a really colorful type poster. Um, audio, maybe you would like to listen to something on YouTube. They have YouTube tapes, um, YouTube, not tapes, but YouTube videos, ooh, tapes, and that you can listen to. And also you would say it yourself, two times three is six. You know, someone repeated to you, you repeated to them. You, you and your mom can go back and forth. Your mom can say, what's two times three? You can say six. So you can say, what's two times eight? You can say 16. Or then you can say, or yourself, you can say two times two is four. You know, so you can do it yourself or you can interactively do it with your mom or your dad or someone. Just go back and forth. As long as you're hearing it and you're saying it, you really get it. You might be an audio learner. And then you have rewrite. You know, maybe you're reading something from a book or from the chart and you're writing it down. You have to read it and write it, read it and write it to enforce it in your head. And then you have the kinesthetic. Kinesthetic are the movers and shakers, okay? They always up, falling out, doing this, doing this, clapping here, tapping there. Okay, so the kinesthetic learners are the ones that normally don't walk straight, they sideways they bouncing they falling you know laughing and joking you know you just see all that okay those are kinesthetic learners now for the kinesthetic learners okay so so like i said kinesthetic movers and shakers so with the movers and shakers what you can do is um you can use a ball okay but i'm gonna stop right here and go back some now if you look for the vault assessment right it's called the vault assessment if you get the Valk assessment online, and also I have it on my website, diverseilearning.com. Okay, and I'll put my website up here. Well, I'll leave it in the bottom. Okay, so you can get the Valk. You can do the PDF where you can print it out, have your child fill it out, or you can do the online. Have your child go in and tell them to really think how they feel about each question. Don't worry about how the mother feel, how your friend feel. How do you feel? What do you like the best? So based on how they feel about different situations, whether they want to draw something, take a picture, based on what they say at the end is going to give you a description of how they learn best. And so I just went through visual, audio, rewrite. These are strategies I'm going through that your child can implement if they are one of the one or two of the um, learning, have one or two of the learning styles. Now for kinesthetic, let me go into the different strategies. Now for kinesthetic, the movers and the shakers, because I had two kinesthetic sons, two of them. So um, what you can do to get a basketball, and if you want to do skip counting, take the basketball, and you know how to dribble. Okay, let's say you don't know how to dribble yet, right? Because dribbling takes some skills, some coordination. Let's say you can't dribble, like, uh-uh, go under the leg. Let's say you can't do that yet. You can bounce the ball, okay? Now, bounce the ball, for some people, I realize, take coordination, too, because some people have a hard time. But it comes with practice. So you bounce the ball and go two, four, six, eight, ten, to the other side, you know, 12, 14. Then you can go both. You can do that with skip counting. Okay, now if you have like a, a baseball, you can throw it up. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Put it over here. You know, if you want to, you can juggle, whatever. But you know, do it to the consistency that you are actually learning it, you know. And then if you have a football, you know, you can catch the football, soccer ball, kick the soccer ball. You know, there's different things you can do um, depending on how you want to do it, you know. But when you do the repetition, of the, the bouncing of the ball or the throwing of the ball, you can do the repetition of learning your multiplication facts, okay? Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm, I'm throwing up a baseball, okay? And then this basketball. Two, four, you know, you can have two basketballs. Two, four, six, eight, you know, do that. <clears throat> if you're that good, you can do two basketballs at once. Whatever it takes to show the, repeti the repetition, okay? Or you can just say, or you can, you know, throw the ball back and forth with your parent and they might ask you, what's two times two? You say four, you know, what's two times eight? You say 16, you know, they might ask you, are you catching it? Okay, seven, um, not 17, because 17 prime, you're not gonna get anything else you do one times 17, okay? Prime is a number that only has two factors, one and a self, okay? And 
so let me get go back to multiplication because you might not know what factors are yet. So let me let me stay consistent. Okay, so you might get the ball, you catch the ball, and then you looking, you know, they might say, What's two times eight? You say 16, you know, and then you might get a point for catching for doing a brick right. Then they also have multiplication balls where they have multiplication problems on the ball, and when you catch it, your thumb, wherever your thumb lands, you have to read that fact that a multiplication um, fact. So it might be two times three and you have to say six, you know, then you keep going back and you get out if you don't get the fact right, you know, so they have big balls. I still play with it when I had my students. I think I did it in like sixth grade and I had my sixth grade students. It's a big old ball. You blow up and you throw it through the class and whatever the finger line, lines on the thumb, they have to figure out what the answer is. If they can't get it, they have to sit down. And it was so much fun. You know, and some people actually, you know, found, found it to be very interesting to learn effects like that. Okay. So we did the ball. And then for each one, you can do the, the um, multiplication um, flashcards. Okay, the flashcards are very um for each one. You know, the visual, you see the numbers, you know, on the flashcard. The audio, you see the numbers, and you can actually say two times three is blank. Um, read, write. If you see it, you can also write it on paper, you know, read it and write it on paper. And kinesthetic, you can actually, you know, read it, and then when you see the answer right or wrong, you know, flip it to see if the answer right or wrong. Now, kinesthetic, you hold your own flashcards. Mommy and dad and big brother and sister do not need to be holding your flashcards because you need that movement, you know, you need that movement to bring action, you know, so you can't just sit there and then expect to learn it. Once you have this movement, for some reason, you know, it goes, you know, physiology, you know, it goes into you and you you get it like when you're reading a book do you notice you're holding a book and you're walking with the book and that's how you're reading because you need that movement you know you were made special the special way with movement so no you're not going to be sitting like this all day you know and also i forgot to say for the kinesthetic learner get an exercise ball and then everything you do with the kinesthetic learners the other ones can do it also but I'm just focusing on them because they intentionally need movement so a ball or any type of blocks or anything Legos that can help them have movement will work but the visual audio rewrite they can also use the kinesthetic styles because those are the funnest ones for the most part so get an exercise ball you know and you go up and down two four six eight ten twelve you know you know if you want to go fast two four six eight ten twelve you know the exercise ball is so good because it relaxes you and it gets you to really you know think about helps you to really think and push the thinking forward you know so exercise ball football basketball baseball soccer whatever you need to have that movement whatever seems to be fun you know, if you don't want a ball, you can get something else. But I'm just giving you things that, you know, really will give you movement. <laughs> and you have to have coordination to kind of catch it, you know. So you focus in and catch it at the same time, you know. You focus in and catch it at the same time. And kinesthetic learners can do that. They're really good with moving and thinking at the same time, you know. It's like a challenge and they love it. <laughs> okay. So we talked about the kinesthetic learners. And that's it for the learning styles. Now, let me get to some resources that's really good. Now, this first resource is really good. And of course, I have resources also. Let me clear this out. Okay, let's see something real quick. Let me clear this board. Okay, now, so I want to talk about some resources. Okay, let's do this real quick. I, I was like, let me hop on here real quick and do a multiplication video. So, um, so it kind of was last minute, <laughs> but I just had an idea and I was like, let me do it. Someone might actually like this video. So yeah, very short notice. I just hopped on, had some ideas and I said, let me see, let me just flow with it. Okay. So these are some resources. Now, one particular resource that I like, and I can just um, type the resources. Uh, multiplication.com okay multiplication.com is a very good resources very good resource oh, because they have audio score quizzes that means you can go on take a pre-test um for multiplication you can take a pre-test and then at the end you'll get 
you'll know which ones you got wrong, which ones you were slow with, and which ones you got right. Okay. Now the ones you were slow with was, was yellow. They they come up yellow. The ones you got right are green. And the ones you got incomplete or got wrong are red. Okay. So you want to try to aim to get all green. Okay. Now the ones that you got yellow for, that means you took a long time. That means you wasn't hundred percent sure, or you were kind of weak. So when you go back to practice, you don't practice the ones in the green, okay? A lot of times parents see their child messing up a multiplication. They make them go back through and do everything. Do not practice the ones you got wrong, right? You practice the ones that you were slow on, the yellows and the reds, okay? Focus on your weaknesses, you know, so you can be intentionally and use your time wisely. Do not go through and do everything over and over and over again if you get a few problems wrong. That's a waste of time. It's frustrating. It's tedious. And it's, it's just, it just takes away from your energy. It gets you to the point where you're like, you know what? I'm just tired of this. And forcing someone to do that, it's like torture, okay? So once your child goes through the pre-test, the pre on the auto score quizzes under multiplication, um, when you see the yellows and the green, the yellows and the red, have them do those ones, okay? So they might have for for um yellow, they might have um five times seven. Okay. They got 35 right, but it took longer. I think it's like three seconds to get each one, you know, I believe, but they got it, they they took a little longer. They got it right, but they need to be like this. They need to be like this fluency. They need to be like this, you know, five times seven, 35. Okay, five times six, 30. Okay, seven times seven, 49. They need to be like that. And now let's talk about the ones in red. The ones in red, they got wrong. You know, sometimes they'd be like, oops, I should have put that. And that's okay, but you got to put that first time through, okay? So it's okay to make mistakes now in the beginning, but later on, you need to make sure you're right because those mistakes, when you get to algebra, everything else is going to hit different. Okay, it hit differently, it hit different. They always say, well, that hit me different. It's going to hit different, you know. Instead of getting a 100, you got an 80. you like, whoa, that's when you really feel it, you know. Or instead of getting a 100, you got a 60 because you got a couple of them wrong. That's when you really feel it. But you don't want to go through feeling that in the future. You want to get this together now. So for the red ones, a good one would be six times eight or eight times six. That's one of the main multiplication facts, six times eight, eight times six, that people get wrong. But six times eight or eight times six is what? Huh? Is what? What? It's 48. 48. And that's one of the hardest ones that people normally get wrong. Okay. So they need to practice the yellow ones, which are the slow ones, and the red ones, which one they got completely wrong. And then after they practice, and you saw the different strategies I used, um, after they practice, and they can go through and use this multiplication.com to do practice. You know, they got the ones, the zeros, the sevens, the six, and they can go through and practice those and see their scores. And, you know, when they think they have it, there's a post test at the end where they can take the test. And after they take the pre test, you can actually print out flashcards. Okay. You can print out flashcards. You can print out um, how many they got right, how many they got wrong. You know, there's several things that you can print out to use as a resource to see where you can start. So remember, it's not about studying everything. It's about focusing and studying the things that you're weak on so you can get better with that, increase that. Because going through and studying everything is a waste of time if you already know how to do it, okay? But when you get your next test and you didn't do as well on that one, you, the one that you got right before, then study it. But you want to keep them focused on their weaknesses, not everything, because that's a lot of time. And keep doing something over and over that you actually know. It's frustrating for a child. Like, I already know this. Why I got to keep doing this one? You know, because you need to know all of them. No, that's not the right way. That's torture. Focus on the weaknesses. Okay, focus on the weaknesses, mom and dad. Now, the next one I want to talk about is um, extra math dot i think it's the org extra math dot org or com i think it's dot org extra math dot org is a basic math platform and addition subtraction multiplication and division that your child can go on but you have to sign them up 
and they constantly be practicing competing against the teacher and things like that and once they master that skill they get a certificate and you can print it out and put it on a wall and i used to do that for my students you know i had them do extra math and then once they got a certificate i would get a copy i would print it out and i had certificates all around the classroom you know you can see who got them so you can make four certificate addition subtraction multiplication and division and it just feels good because you actually put the time in there's like several different tests or assessments that you have to go through to actually earn it so everyone's not going to earn it in a week it might actually take a month for some people or months for other people um when they get to multiplication it tends to take a little longer and when they get to division it can kind of speed up a little bit because you know once you know your multiplication tables then you know division becomes easier because it's just you know flipping it's just reverse multiplication you know it's flipping the digits you know the fact families you know Three times two is six, division six divided by two is three. You take the same three numbers and you just switch them around. That's multiplication, division. Okay, multiplication forward, division backwards, okay? Now, at the extramath.org, um, on my website, which will be down the bottom, on my YouTube, um, I'll say my YouTube, my YouTube channel, my YouTube math channel, that's gonna be down the bottom. Um, I have, now this is, now my video is for multi-digit, multi-digit modification for fourth graders, you know, when you're doing like partial product or you're doing like the lattice or you're doing like the traditional algorithm um, multiplication 23 times um, four. Okay, and you carry in and 23 times 14, you carry in things and putting the zero down for the placeholder. Okay, so I went over four different strategies and the rectangle method. You know, basically when you draw a rectangle and you break up the, the rectangle into boxes, when you put the, the multiplication um, facts on the side and you put the answer in the middle and you add, it's really fun. Okay, so I did four strategies and my son and myself did that and we did multiplication. So I think I might have did two and he did um, two or he might have did three and I did one because it was years ago. I'm like, like, wow, maybe four or five years ago we did this video. It's a really good video. That's my math channel. On my math channel, I have also other videos where I'm doing like, you know, exponents and other different math topics. <laughs> so I have that. So YouTube for multiplication, but it's double digits. So I don't know if you're there yet, but if you want to just um, take a peek and see, because you might actually be on that or you might be struggling, you can do that. Like I said, division is so many different strategies for division two. We did like four, I believe it's four and we was doing common core math. So we was breaking it down for you. Okay, so you can use my map, my YouTube channel. And also you will see down below, you're going to have my free parent resource page that's going to have many free math resources. Okay. Um, I also have someone, his name is Professor, Professor Akil. Okay, Professor Akil Parker, and he has a channel called All This Math. And, you know, he goes over different concepts, I believe, from basics all the way up to calculus also. So you can use his, um, his channel also. And he has a new book out too. And in his book, he's breaking down how parents can help their children with mathematics, explains mathematics. So it's like a guide, it's like a guidebook to show parents how to teach your own children how to do different math um, problems, concepts, and things like that. Okay, so those are some of the math, um, things like that. And on my, um, on my page also, I have a blank math a blank multiplication work, a blank multiplication table um, sheet, you know. So it's real important for your child to use a blank sheet and go through and fill out all the marks for the multiplication, you know, so they can have it. When they look at the sheet, they see all the patterns, you know, they see things that they never noticed before. And just realizing that the math is based on patterns that also give them a sense of understanding, maybe conceptual understanding, something they never saw, you know, could just put it in here and the teacher just saying it without writing it or whatever is difficult. But when you see it and connect it and understand and you did a re repeated and then the skipping and the, you know you did the the arrays after doing those things you know everything start making a lot of sense and then you want to you have the passion to learn because when something doesn't make sense sometimes people are like it doesn't make sense I'm not going to learn it and you intentionally don't learn it and it's not that you can't learn you 
chose not to learn and people can choose not to learn something. So let's undo it and let's open ourselves up to learning because you're very smart. You're very smart. Okay. And it's not your fault that you don't understand. Maybe someone didn't explain it to you the way you needed to be explained it to, you know, need everything to be explained, you know, but maybe they didn't focus on your learning style. You know, you are very unique. You need to be taught a certain way. So once you go through the vault assessment, you will know how you learn best. So when you go and see a teacher, you say, I'm a kinesthetic, I'm a skin, kinesthetic teacher, I'm a kinesthetic learner teacher. Can you help me with some strategies so that I can learn this method? And some teachers be like, wow, okay, let me look at, let me look that up and see, you know. But I have been teaching, you know, um, focus on learning styles with my students. I, e I even had them separated. The audio kinesthetic was more closer to each other. And my visual and rewrite students were on the other side. And it was very pleasurable because the reading and um, reading and visual students want things to be quiet, want things to be neat, want things to be um, just just peaceful and then the kinesthetic kids like moving and shaking the audio kids like humming mm -hmm. you know so it tends to be frustrating for the visual kids you know so I had moved them in a rewrite over and it was wonderful they even thanked me for that situation so that's the teachers can do that and it will help your students and they will really appreciate it because the kinesthetic students were having fun but they had to calm down when it came to the test I would get them little stress balls take the stress ball hold it under the desk and you can squeeze as you think you know that's not making noises because they tend to take the pencils and bam 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 you know tap the pencil they got a pencil and it you know, and I'm like, you can't do that during the test. You can tap your head or you can shake your leg. A lot of my told them they can shake their leg. As long as it's not touching the desk, <laughs> you know, shake your leg. So someone was shaking and you, the faster you saw them shaking, that's the harder they were thinking. Kinesthetic people move really fast when they're really concentrating. You know, so if you want to see if a kinesthetic person is thinking, you a lot of times concentrate, you'll see how fast they're moving. But when you tell them stop, you stop their concentration. You stop their learning. Let them move. You know, just because you're not a mover or shaker, stop treating your child like that. Okay. Your child needs to move. So give them a, a stress ball and tell them to shake it. If you don't want to hear the movement, let them walk around and read. Let them breathe. They need to be active. You know, they can be the, the next generation, the next generational um, engineers and you stopping them because you can't handle that your child is unique. You need to learn some strategies, take a deep breath and let your child breathe and let your child reach self accusation And they can't if you're stopping them from thinking. Okay, so let me focus back. Okay, because I really can go in on parents on kinesthetic learners because I do consulting and I had a lot of moms, my son can't keep still, my son, no. Get, your, you can get that exercise ball. And that has been a big help for a lot of my clients. I've been thanked over and over and over again. <laughs> okay, so you see the resources. Um, I have the YouTube channel. I actually have a multiplication, um, well, a timetable book you know, a time, yeah, timetable book where the kids can go through and practice their timetable work, workbook that'll be left be below. Like I said, I have a YouTube channel, the math channel. Um, I'm trying to think. I have so many different resources. If you go to my free parent page, you'll see that. And I'm just passionate. You know, my story, like I said before, I learned my multiplication tables in second grade. And I have always loved math. Math has always been easy. You know, math was my friend, was my friend. So parents, please, please print out the blank multiplication table sheet. Um, yeah, please print that out. And if you want to get flashcards, flashcards are good also. The, the different strategies that you use, if one doesn't work, use something else. And it's not that the ch child can't learn it. Maybe you not focus or target it on their learning style. Okay, so take the let them take the vault assessment test without you. 
intervening and then at the end tell them to be truthful, truthful at the end calculate everything to see what your child is if your child's already moving and shaking always getting in trouble already you pretty much know they can aesthetic but still you know let them take the test so you can actually have the data for it you know data data for it and also what i want to say sometimes people can use the abacus now one of my sons he he's kinesthetic i had the abacus you know he will move the little I'll say blocks, I don't know any blocks, but he will move the little um little structures over, you know. So we have like, I believe it's 10 rolls. And if he was doing um three times two, he'll move three over on two rolls. And then, you know, three times two, he'll get six because he just have to go through and count it. So advocates is really good, especially when they really want to say KG first, you know. But if an older kid wants to use an advocate, that's all that's also okay. Um yeah, like I said, my 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 channel has so many different um has so many different strategies. But like I said, the multiplication one of four different ways multi digit is really good. And just look at everything else. I have a I have um numerous a numer numerous amount of um strategies and resources and assessments and um AI tools and teaching tools on my free page for parents so just take some time go through that and last but not least last but not least i also have a multiplication fluency class going on now this summer where the class size is only five students per class and your child will learn from zero up to 10 factors multiplication and they're going to be with, I have two specialists that they're going to be working with. Both of the specialists have been teachers, and one, one or two, one is still teaching, so the previous teachers, and they're doing math fluency. With that, you will order my book on, you know, on um, Amazon. The book doesn't cost that much to go with the lesson, and your child will get instructions of how to do repeated multiplication. The teacher will be reinforcing with problems and it will be repeating after each other and things like that. So it's 12 sessions for six weeks. So um, yeah, 12 sessions for six weeks. But I believe one class is Monday, Wednesday, the other class is Tuesday and Thursday. And I will also leave, leave a link on that at the bottom. But I have, I have, I'm gonna say tons, but I have, many resources and I love multiplication I love math and hopefully you take a take advantage of my resources my strategies and use that for your child to become a multiplication um with you know because it's a really good feeling to be really smart in multiplication and you get into those contests and I've been in been very competitive a math be very competitive you know, and I also had students that were very competitive and won math competitions in, in the top levels, female Muslim students, you know, you know, so um, anyone can be great at math. It just take patience, understanding how you think, and someone helping you to target the way you think so that you can actually get the math, understand the math, have conceptual understanding. And so the grouping that I did, the arrays that I did, that's more for conceptual understanding. You can see that three groups of two is six and because you go through and count it and you get six. That's conceptual understanding, being able to break it down that makes sense for you, not just memorizing it, you know, because maybe memorizing it is, is um, it's not really helping you. You don't understand why you're doing it. So when you go through my video and you see the different strategies, the number line, the arrays, the skip counting, you know, once you see that, maybe it make more sense. And then you can use the other strategies. Like I said, read it out loud, type it, you know, put it in a calculator. You can do all those different things just to reinforce the way you want to learn it. And then once you, like I said before, once you get your learning style, you can really target it. Be kinesthetic, get that ball, you know, get one of those balls, whether it's a soccer ball, football, baseball, you know, bounce it, exercise ball, you know, do repeated addition. You know, you can just do um, all the different things that you would like. Be creative. You know, some things I didn't put, I didn't put everything. Just like I said, I just thought about getting on here and doing a video. So 
once I get off, I'm gonna be like, wow, I should have told them this. I should have told them that. But I just put everything together really quick. And like I said, short notice. So hopefully this really helps because I was like, wow, I should do this video because multiplication helped me. And hopefully this video will help you because it's so important. It's so important, so important. If you're struggling in multiplication, you're going to struggle in algebra because you're not going to always be using calculators. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. If the teachers say no calculators and you're doing pre-algebra, you're going to struggle. You know, you're going to struggle. And then they start throwing in integers with our negative and positive numbers. If you're messing up in regular multiplication with positive numbers, when they throw negatives in and you got to know all the sign rules, it's going to be frustrating. And then when they throw the letters in, which are the variables in algebra, it's going to really be frustrating. You know, and then geometry, they start throwing the shapes in, it's going to get frustrating more and more each year. So take this time to get this multiplication because it's going to help you be quicker instead of adding everything up seven times eight. You don't want to do seven, eight times. And then let's say you skip something and you get it wrong. You got to start again. Okay. Seven times eight, it's 56. You want to know it like that. Eight times eight, 64. Nine times nine, 81. Okay. And also I want to show you this really quick. I wanted to teach you um, two nine fact uh, factors of nine really quick. So let me erase this. I wanted to show you, well, should I, how many should I show you? I wanted to show you four tricks real quick, okay? And then I'll end it. I'm sorry. When it's about math, you know, I go all in. Okay, so the first one I want to show you, you might have seen this before. Okay, so this is the multiples of nine, okay? Or the nine timetables. Okay, so this is the nine timed tables, okay? So the first thing you do, do I want to do it like that? Okay, so the first thing you do, you put zero, you put one, put two, put three, put four, put five, put six, put seven, put eight, put nine down, okay? So the first thing you do, you go through and you put those down, okay? That's the first thing you do. Now, we learned it in nine times tables really quick. Now, this is just a quick method to learn so you get used to seeing a pattern, okay? Sometimes people have to see it. Okay, so let me see if my number will come out right. Okay, and then you go backwards. Nine. Oops, it's a little. Okay, let me see. Will that line up? Okay, let me just erase that because I wanted to really line up. So maybe I put it up here. Okay. No. So maybe I'll write it. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. You go from zero to nine. I'm going to teach you the nines real quick. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but let's see. And then I want you to do go from nine and go, to, go um, down nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what we just did. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and draw a line. Nine times one is what? Nine. Nine times two was what? 18. Nine times three is what? 27. Nine times four is what? 36. Nine times five is what? 45. Nine times six, um, 54, okay? Nine times seven, 63. Nine times eight, 72. Nine times nine, 81. Nine times 10 is 90, okay? So the first one is nine times one. Second one is nine times two. Third one is nine times three. Fourth one is nine times four. Fifth one is nine times five. Next one is nine times six, okay? So if you want to learn your math, if you want to learn your nines, one quick way of learning your nines is to put zero all the way down to nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then go back and do the backwards, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And then when you look at the numbers, the first one is nine times one, nine. Nine times two, 18. Nine times three, 27. Nine times four, 36. Nine times five, 45. Nine times six, 54. Nine times seven, 63. Nine times eight, eight, 72. Nine times nine, times nine 81. And nine times 10, 90. So that's a quick nine timetable trick, okay? I want to show you the sevens really quick. So let me hurry up and do the sevens. Yeah, let me see. Like I said, this was last minute. So you have to excuse me. 
If I had more time, I would have thought about it. But hopefully this helps. Okay, let me make it a little neater. And then I have somewhere I have to go soon. So I have to I actually have a multiplication presentation and a few. So I got to hurry up and go. The family will be gone. I have a multiplication presentation. So I'm going to be having fun with kids and multiplication. Okay. Okay, still off a little bit. Do I want to be? I'm not going to aim for perfection, but I do want it to be neat because I don't want to be here forever, but I do want it. I do want to aim for perfection right now, but I don't want it to hold me back from finishing on time. Okay. Sometimes perfection will hold you back, some people back from even starting. With me, it never been starting. Maybe I took longer than I was supposed to, but it was never started. I always started. Okay. So let me see. What's the little trick I want to teach you? I got so many things. I want to teach you the sevens. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to teach you the sevens. So you make a little chart like this for the sevens. I'm going to wait. You make a little chart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then once you make your chart, you put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? You do this for the sevens. You put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And in a different color, I want you to look at this. This is like a little pattern. So I want you to try to see what I'm doing. Okay, you ready? You want to put zero, one, two. Okay, zero, one, two. And then start with two again. Two, three, four. Okay, now you're going to start with four again. Four, five, six. Okay, so these are the seven tables. Okay, and I'm gonna go back and show you how I know that. Okay, the seven timed tables. Okay, so these are the seven time tables. So let me just go ahead and show you what I did. All right, let me get, get my spotlight. Okay, so seven times one is seven. Seven times two is 14. Three is 21. Seven times four is 28. Seven times five is 35. Seven times six is 40. That's 42, seven times seven, 48, seven times eight, 56, and seven times nine is 63. So this is one way you can memorize your sevens. Go through and make a three by three, you know, three rows, three columns, okay? Start all the way on the, the right-hand side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then start from your left side, zero, one, two, two, three, four, four, five, six, and voila, you have your seven timetables, okay? And then the last one's going to be something simple. These are just the tens, which most people understand the tens. They tend to make sense. It tends to make sense. Ooh, okay, I'm good. Okay, so let me type it out since I've been staying consistent with typing. Okay, I'm going to make this the 10 timed tables okay 10 time tables okay so with the 10 time tables let's say really quick i'm going to say one put one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten okay now we start with the 10 time tables and with the nines i told you start at zero and go down with the, the nine you start with zero and go down to nine with the tens i want you to start with one and go down to ten now, what is, and then what I would like for you to do, I would just like for you to start with zero and go all the way back down to zero. You can see it right here, zero. No, 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 sorry. What I would like for you to do, I'm thinking something else. What I would like for you to do, da -da -da, undo. It won't let me undo it. Okay, here we go. What I would like for you to do is just put zero straight down. <laughs> Get mixed up. So zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, so hopefully that helps someone. I just thought of that recently, <laughs> like a couple of minutes ago. So you just write one, down, one through 10, and then you just drop a zero 
after it. And so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10 times one is 10. 10 times two is 20. 10 times three is 30. 10 times four is 40. 10 times five is 50. Okay, so those are the 10 timetables. Okay, so we did the nines table, the seven in the table, and then the 10, I did a straight in the list. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, like I said, I did this a spare of the moment. Um, after I get off, I am going to think about, wow, I should have put that in. But I think the things that I put in were um, very um, important, very essential. And I'm just telling you from a person I learned how multiplication tables in second grade, multiplication is so important. And so if you're struggling, please know that this will make your life a lot easier, a lot easier coming from a person that didn't struggle. I mean, I had some challenges in math, but I loved it because I always love a challenge. You know, I have really good problem solving skills, critical thinking because I had a strong foundation in the beginning. And plus I was motivated because I was getting things right. That's why I was in competition, you know, I, the girl competing against many boys, you know, because when I was coming up, a lot of the boys were smart in math, but I came through smart too. And like I said before, I had students that I taught, I put them in a competition and the females came in the top position in the math competition. So everyone can learn math. You just have to figure out how you learn best and you have to learn that way. So your parent has to figure out how you learn best so that you can get over and not know multiplication because obviously it's something that's not um, being targeted. You know, it's something not being targeted. And if you take a little longer, that's okay as long as you get it, as long as you get it. But a lot of times people don't have that conceptual understanding. They just trying to memorize stuff that doesn't make sense. And when you memorize things that don't, doesn't make sense, it's hard for you to rely on that because someone asked you to explain it. I don't know. I just know, you know, you might hear questions like that. I, I just get it. Um, it's just easy, you know, but you really don't know. You really don't have that conceptual understanding. You just memorize a bunch of facts. But it's time for you to get that understanding. Just look at my video, go through it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And peace.